My name is Pam Nixon from Peace Play, and you are here for Storytime Yoga for the Bernards Township Library. I'm so happy you came to join me, and I can't wait to read some stories with you today and do a little moving of our bodies, take some nice deep breaths together, and have some fun. So we're going to start the way we start all of my yoga classes, which is by warming up our hands. Now it's a very, very warm day outside my house today because it's spring, spring is here. That means the sun is shining and the birds are singing and there's wonderful fresh air and we get to go outside and play. One of my favorite things about spring is that we get to put away our hats, our gloves, our winter coats, and we get to put on short sleeves, sunnies, go outside and play in the sun. Even though it's warm outside, we're still going to take some time to warm up our bodies. So let's start with our hands. Let's warm our hands up. Maybe you can check them first and see if they're warm or cold. If you place your hands on your cheeks, you can tell me, are your hands warm or are they cold? Shout it out, warm or cold. My hands are almost always cold, so I have to do a whole lot of extra work here to keep them warm. So I'm going to rub my hands together super duper fast and I'm gonna make a whole lot of energy. The faster you rub, the more you can feel that energy. Tell me, do you feel it? Feels like warmth? Feels like tingliness in your fingers, maybe? And then after you warm up your hands, check them again. Are they feeling a little bit warmer? Mine are a little bit warmer, but I'm gonna keep going, so we're gonna rub, 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 rub. Rub your hands together and make some energy, make some energy, make some energy. Rub your hands together and make some energy. Take a deep breath. Om. Good job. Nice work warming up your hands. How about we warm up our feet? Can you put your hands on your feet and tell me warm or cold? My feet are a little bit chilly. So we're gonna put our feet together and you can put your hands on the floor to help hold yourself up. And now we're gonna rub our feet together. Rub your feet together and make some energy. Make some energy. Make some energy. Rub your feet together and make some energy. Take a deep breath. Oh. Nice work. How about we warm up our hands and our feet at the same time, which is a little bit tricky because we have to use our tummy muscles. We can't use our hands to hold ourselves up if we're warming up our hands. So we're gonna have to use our tummy muscles. So our hands and feet come up off the floor. Tighten up your tummy muscles so you don't fall over. And now we're gonna warm them up. Ready? Here we go. Rub your hands and feet and make some energy. Make some energy. Make some energy. Rub your hands and feet and make some energy. Take a deep breath. Om. Good job. Give yourself a really big high five. All right. Now if you've taken yoga classes with me before, then you know my absolute favorite thing to do is a sun dance, especially on a warm spring day. So let's get up onto our feet. A sun dance is a little dance we do, some moving and some breathing with our body. We move and we breathe. And it's our way to say thank you to the sun for everything that the sun does for us, like give us light and heat, and it makes things grow. All those beautiful new flowers you're going to start to see for springtime, that couldn't happen without the sun. The sun makes them grow. Maybe you're seeing some crocuses Crocuses are usually first flowers to pop up for springtime. And daffodils, and soon we're gonna see some tulips. Those are all wonderful spring flowers. Do you have a favorite spring flower? Shout it out so I can hear. I love spring flowers. And we have them thanks to the sun. So let's say thank you to the sun by doing a sun dance. We're gonna start in nice, tall, strong mountain pose with our feet on the floor and our arms by our side. If you know the words, you can sing along with me, okay? Here we go. 
Reach your hands up to the sky. Reach, 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 reach. Bend down low and touch your toes. Maybe give them a little tickle. Tickle, tickle. Step your feet back into plank. Strong plank pose on your belly, little snake. Can I hear your snake sound? Nice one. Lift your hips up, downward dog. Jump your feet up like a frog. Let's do a little froggy balance while we're here. Let's put one froggy arm up into the air. And then the other one, maybe give yourself a froggy high five. Good job. Now on the count of three, we're gonna do a big frog jump together. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three, ribbon. Nice job. Step your feet back into plank, your strong plank pose on your belly, little snake. Lift your hips up, downward dog. Jump your feet up like a frog. Reach your hands up to the sky. Let them fall down by your side. Take a deep breath in and let it out. Let's do that again, deep breath in. And let it out. <sighs> Do you have one more deep breath in you? Deep breath in. <sighs> Good job. Okay, let's take a seat. We're going to look at a beautiful book today called A Peaceful Garden. Since spring is here, and it's time for things to start growing, I've already gotten started on my spring garden. In my spring garden, we're going to have veggies and flowers, but there's a lot of work to do to get the garden ready. I had to do a whole lot of weeding. That means pull out all the little weeds, all the plants that I don't want in my garden. We had to get the dirt ready. We had to buy our seeds and some of our starter plants. I wonder how many of you are working on spring gardens. How about put your hand way up and give a wave if you have a spring garden. How about two hands? How about give yourself a big squeeze? All right, now let's find out what happens in this book. A peaceful garden. We've got two little kittens on the cover. What does a kitten say? Let me hear it. Meow. Before we start, before we look at our very first page, do you think you can come onto your hands and knees like a little kitten? And sometimes when a cat gets angry or scared, it arches its back and all of its fur stands up. Can you arch your back? And then drop your belly, lift your chin. Let's do that again, because it's a really good stretch. So we're gonna round, 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 round. And then drop your belly down, lift your chin. Good job. Maybe we'll do a little cat stretch with our legs. We can stretch one cat leg and then reach for our paw. What color kitten would you be if you could pick any color? If I could turn you into a kitten right now with my magic yoga wand, poof, what color would you be? I think I would like to be, let's switch to the other cat leg. I would like to be a blue and purple spotted cat. Wouldn't that be different? You don't see a lot of blue and purple spotted cats, do you? All right, let's take a seat. You can sit crisscross or you can sit back onto your heels, whatever feels comfortable for you. A peaceful garden. To grow a peaceful garden, wait for the last frost. Just kiss the cold goodbye. That's what I was saying is one of my favorite things about spring is that we get to say goodbye to the cold, goodbye to the snow, goodbye to the winter coats and snow boots, goodbye to staying inside if it's too cold to go play. Now we get to go play all the time outside, right? Dig yourself a patch. You're gonna need a little patch of dirt to make a garden. Soft soil is best, no clumps. There, that little kitten is getting to work and he found something. What did he find in the dirt while he was digging to get his garden ready? 
A little worm. A teeny tiny little worm. What do you think you should do if you find a worm in your garden? Any ideas? If I were you, I would leave it in your garden because worms are actually very helpful for your garden. You can leave that little worm right there in the dirt. Check on the sun to make sure it's still there because your garden is going to need it. A growing garden needs a whole lot of sunlight. The sunlight is what's going to help your seeds sprout. And when the seeds sprout, they turn into teeny tiny little plants and those teeny tiny plants can grow into big plants. Even the biggest, biggest plant you can imagine started as a little seed. Think about all the trees you see when you go outside for a walk or when you look in your yard. Those trees started as tiny little seeds too. First a tiny seed, then a little plant, and then it got bigger, bigger, bigger until it grew into the biggest, tallest tree. Do you have a garden hat? How about a rake? Oh, and there's our little friend, the worm. That little worm is sticking around. And a bucket for all the things you'll grow. These little kittens are getting ready. They're getting all ready to grow their garden. Oh, I see some more friends. What do you see up there? A couple little creatures that you might see when you're out working in a spring garden. I see a butterfly and a little bumblebee. Let's take a break from our book for a minute so we can be butterflies and bumblebees. So let's start with butterfly. You can put your feet together Sit up nice and tall, so try not to do this slouchy, this slouchy sit. Instead, sit up nice and tall, and let's flap our butterfly wings. Fly like a butterfly, fly like a butterfly, fly like a butterfly in the sky. Oops, I forgot my antenna. Fly like a butterfly, fly like a butterfly, fly like a butterfly in the sky. All that flying makes me sleepy. <sighs> Let's take a little rest. Can you bring your nose towards your toes? Sleep like a butterfly, sleep like a butterfly, sleep like a butterfly through the night. Shh. Sleep like a butterfly, sleep like a butterfly, sleep like a butterfly through the night. Time to wake up, little butterflies. Big stretch. Stretch like a butterfly. Open up your wings. Stretch like a butterfly. Can you reach all the way forward? Stretch like a butterfly in the sky. Give your wings a big hug. Stretch like a butterfly. Stretch like a butterfly. Fly like a butterfly in the sky. Good job. Nice work, little butterflies. Let's bring our wings together. And now we're going to swing our feet around behind us so that we can sit back onto our heels. And we're going to turn ourselves into bumblebees. So what does a bumblebee sound like? Can you make the sound for me? We can do it all together. Bzzz. Yes, that's it. Buzz, buzz. Sometimes we see little buzz, little buzz, little buzzes, little bumblebees outside flying around from flower to flower to flower. Bumblebees, just like worms, are also very important for our garden. So if you see them flying around your garden, landing on flowers, you can just leave them be. They are doing very important work to help flowers grow. Just like the sun, so much in nature is working all together to make our beautiful spring gardens. So let's get out some bumblebee wings. You can put your hands on your shoulders and you can flap little bumblebee wings. Now let me hear that buzz again, but this time we're going to take a really deep breath in through our nose so that we have so much air we can buzz for a while. Ready? Hands on your shoulders, flap your little wings, deep breath in. a little bit better. Take your fingers and close your ears. We're not going to stick them in our ears. We're just going to press a little bit very gently to close your ears. That way when you buzz, you hear your buzzing on the inside. Take a deep breath in. Bzzz. It's 
pretty cool, isn't it? Sounds like a whole bunch of little bees buzzing around inside your head. Nice job, little bumblebees. All right, let's see what these cats are up to now. A peaceful garden is for growing many things you might want to eat. So it's time to choose some seeds. Yeah, when it's time to plant your garden, you get to choose what's going in the garden. It looks like they have some, uh, some lettuce maybe and some flowers. Ooh, sunflowers. Have you ever grown a sunflower before? Sunflowers are one of my favorite things to grow because they start as a teeny tiny little seed and they grow into these huge flowers. Sometimes the flower can be as big as your head. Can you believe it? Sunflowers can be huge. And they're pretty easy to grow too. You have to wait until it's a little bit warmer outside and then you can start growing sunflowers. I think they have some carrot seeds. And hmm, I wonder what that one is. We can't tell what that one is. It's a little bit hidden. Let's see. Do you like carrots? Big tops are nice. Easy peasy peas. They'll need a wee pea fence. Peas are a great vegetable to grow in the springtime because they don't mind the cold weather too much. So you can get started on growing peas even when it's still a little bit chilly, especially sugar snap peas. Have you ever had snap peas before? They're delicious. They're very sweet. You should give them a try. They're tasty. Lettuces are always lovely, don't you think? I very much enjoy growing lettuce in the spring. Lettuce is another spring veggie that doesn't mind the cold weather. So you can get started on lettuces very, very early in the spring. A peaceful garden is also for growing many things that others might want to eat. Like, for example, daisies. Bees love daisies, and we were just talking about how important it is to have bees in our garden. So you can plant things that you know the bees are going to want to come to. That's a good way to attract bees to your garden. So do butterflies. Butterflies like the daisies as well. It's nice to plant things that you know the bees and the butterflies and the birds are going to come to because then you get to sit and watch all these wonderful creatures flying around outside your home. Would you like to invite some blackbirds? Let's take a break from our book for a minute so that we can be birds together. We're gonna do this one sitting so you can crisscross your legs or sometimes I like to put one foot up on top, and that's called half lotus. If that doesn't feel good, you can leave both feet down and you can crisscross. I'm gonna do half lotus for now. So we're gonna sit up nice and tall, and let's imagine that we're blackbirds, beautiful blackbirds, with wonderful shiny black feathers and big, big wings. So we're gonna put our wings down by our sides, and we're going to use our breath to make our wings move. So when you take a deep breath in, your wings go up. And when you take a deep breath out, your wings go down. Let's do that again. In and out. Do you think you can do it a tiny bit slower to make our wings move even slower? Slow breath in and out. Nice work. Now this time, we're going to close up our mouth and we're only going to breathe in and out through our nose. So close up your mouth, breathe in through your nose, out through your nose. Let's do that again. In through your nose, out through your nose. Good. And as long as we're down here, we should do a little birdie stretch. So let's bring one birdie wing up and over, reach, 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 reach. Can you reach a little farther? Okay, and then switch sides. So now the other birdie wing comes up, 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 up and over. Stretch and back down, good. Can you reach your birdie wings behind you and hold on tight? And then open up your wings for a big stretch. Maybe lift your chin, look up into the sky. And then wrap your wings around you for a big hug. Good job. Nice blackbirds. 
Should we see what comes next? I wonder what these little kittens are going to do. <gasps> okay, they're getting ready. It says plant an invitation, sunflowers. You can dig some small holes now and plop, 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 go the seeds, very nice. Little paws can tuck them in. So you can see the kittens are digging some holes, putting one seed in each hole, and then they're going to cover up the seeds with the dirt. And there's our little wormy friend. He's still there hanging out. He's making sure that the kittens plant lots of good seeds so that we can have more plants, more flowers, more veggies. Now, this is an important part about growing your garden. Don't forget what's there. Small signs are good. Putting up little signs so you know where you planted what. Because until it comes out of the ground, until it sprouts, you're not going to know what's in there. So they're using little signs like this one that says carrots to show that they planted a little carrot patch. I think those bunnies are excited about the carrots, don't you? Do you think bunnies like to eat carrots? I think they might. Can you get out some flippy floppy bunny ears and put them on the top of your head? And then make your bunny ears go all the way down. There you go. Now just like we used our breath to use our to move our bird wings, we're going to use our breath to move our bunny ears. So take a deep breath in and blow it out your mouth. Good. Let's do that again. Deep breath in. Out your mouth. Now we're going to use our breath to make our bunny ears go up like this. One, two, and then down. One, two. So we're going to breathe in and out. Just like that again. Deep breath in and out. One more time. Breath in and out. Good job, little bunnies. Nice, funny breathing. Oh, now comes time to water the seeds. Now what? Water, gentle showers are best. You can give yourself one if you'd like. Watering your seeds is very, very important because just like seeds need sun, they also need water. This is how they're going to start to sprout and turn into little plants. Water, water, water every day except the rainy ones. Water is important for growing things. Just like you, you're a growing thing, aren't you? And water is very important for you too. Have you had a glass of water today? When we are all done with our yoga class, you should get yourself a nice glass of water and drink it all up so that you have enough water since you're growing, just like the plants. You could also fill up a little saucer for the bees. A few rocks will help them to not fall in isn't that nice? That little kitten is making a little bowl of water for the bees. <clears throat> bees need to drink water too, and if you put a little cup out for them, they'll have something to drink from. That's a nice way to take care of Mother Nature's creatures. And a bath for the birds. This will make your garden even more peaceful. A nice place for the birdies to come and drink, and take a little bath, cool themselves off especially in the mornings. Birds love to come out in the morning and look for a place to splash around in and have a little sip. What a pretty patch you've made. Look at that garden. Wonderful. You've given your peaceful garden everything it needs to grow. Boy, those cats have done a great job, haven't they? They planted onions, radishes. Do you like radishes? They've planted peas and lettuce, carrots and kale, all wonderful things, very tasty. And now you and the bees and the birds and the rabbits can all wait together. What do you think they're all waiting for? They've planted the seeds. They've given them plenty of water and sunlight. Now they're just waiting for the feast. Because once everything starts to grow, you get to pick the vegetables and eat them. You can have a little picnic. You get to enjoy all the beautiful flowers that you've planted. You get to hang out in your peaceful garden. Here's some pictures. Flowers and veggies and seeds. 
There are our friends, the cats, after their long day of planting, taking care of their flowers. Isn't it so nice to plant a garden? There's so much fun in planting a garden. It's a lot of work, but it's fun work, and it feels good to get your hands in the dirt and dig and plant and watch things grow like flowers. How about we turn ourselves into flowers? Let's put our feet on the floor, maybe give a little tap. Tap, tap, tap. Feet apart, arms up. Now put your hands together and bring them inside so that you can tap the floor. And then walk your hands underneath your legs. It's tricky, isn't it? And we're gonna pick up our feet and turn ourselves into flowers. Now we can be any kind of flower that we want. What kind of flower do you wanna be? Shout it out really, really loud. What kind of flower? I think I'm going to be a daffodil. Since it's springtime and a daffodil is a spring flower, I'll be a nice, beautiful, yellow daffodil. And now let's undo our flowers. So we're gonna bring our hands back out, hug our knees or our flower petals, and let's sit crisscross applesauce again. I have a little flower that I wanna show you. It's a little purple flower and it has a smiley face. It's happy to see you. Now we're going to use our flower to practice taking some full deep breaths. We're going to do a little bit of flower breathing. So I'm going to show you how it's done. You're going to take a deep breath in and out the mouth. Like you're smelling a beautiful flower and it smells so good. And then we're going to say what the flower smells like. So I think this flower smells like rainbows. your turn. Come a little closer so you can sniff. Now take a deep breath in and out. <sighs> Want to do it again? Deep breath in and out. <sighs> what does it smell like to you? Shout it out. What does it smell like? I'm going to do one more time. Can you do it with me? This time we'll do it together. Ready? Deep breath in and out. Now I think it smells like fresh cut grass. Have you ever smelled what the air smells like when grass has just been cut? It reminds me of summer. Riding my bike outside, going for walks, playing with the kids in the neighborhood. Ah, warm weather. I love warm weather. I have one more thing that I want to show you before we say goodbye and that is my pinwheel. This spins around. You could use your fingers to make it move or you could use your breath to make it move. Let's use our breath. I'm gonna go first and then you're gonna get a turn, just like with the flower. So I'm gonna take a deep breath in and then I'm gonna blow. Look at that, isn't that cool to see what your breath can do? Your breath can make things move. My breath is doing that. Now I want you to take a turn too. So I'm gonna bring it a little bit closer. I'm gonna need your help. So I want you to take a deep breath in and then blow on the pinwheel. Ready? Uh-oh, I think we need to blow a little bit harder. We'll do it together. Take a deep breath in. There it goes. Good job. Your breath can make things move. Isn't that pretty cool? We don't often get to see our breath because it's happening inside and we don't get to see much of it unless we put something right in front of our face and then we get to see our breath move it. It's pretty cool. All right, let's come take a seat again. You can sit crisscross or if you liked sitting half lotus, you can put one foot up. And we're going to sing a little song. This is a kind of our goodbye song because it's time for yoga to be all done. It's time for us to say goodbye until next time. So this is our namaste song. Namaste is a word that means the light and the love and all the goodness inside of me sees you and sees all the light and the goodness inside of you. And so I bow to you to honor you and to respect you and to say, hey, I see you and you're awesome. So we're gonna sing a little song together. We're gonna put our hands together. Now I'm gonna sing a line and then you can sing it back to me, okay? I bow to you, your turn. You bow to me, your turn. We bow to each other. 
Namaste. Nice singing. Now we'll do it all together. I bow to you, you bow to me, we bow to each other. Namaste. Now on the count of three, we're going to throw our hands up in the air and yell namaste. Ready? One, two, three. Namaste. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for reading The Peaceful Garden with me and for doing some yoga and some breathing and having a good time. I can't wait to see you again for the next yoga class. Bye.